What are you doing with that fork? Morning, y'all. Today, we are talking balls. Yep, that's right, we're gonna talk golf balls. It seems to be the world has an issue with golf balls. Or at least the media seem to be happy to fuel a discussion about golf balls and going too far and should they reel it back for the professional games. That's what we're gonna talk about. But I've done some research. Done a little bit of research. Maybe these journos don't do research. Maybe they just write, I don't know. But anyway, let's discuss it today. Head on my Twitter, at Golf Online, if you don't already, and join in the poll. We've got a poll running on there. Uh, I'd like to know your opinion on should the ball be really back or not for distance. Um, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm gonna use those annoying facts again. People hate that, don't they? So yesterday's question was about uh, low spinning irons, and lots of people don't really know what irons they got, but lots of people seem to get a lot from the discussions yesterday, which is good, thanks for all the comments. And today, today's uh, question is the same as the ones running on Twitter, so before the video continues and we present any of the facts, um, should the ball be real back for the pro game? Should it come back all for everyone? Should it be one ball for all? Should it be different for the pros? Should the ball be real back? Is it going too far? Is the ball the root of all evil? Post comments down below. Now, just before we continue this video, I haven't got an opinion on this yet. I just got an opinion on maybe the media presenting an argument without really looking at any of the facts, which is why I've tried to dig a little deeper today. But I don't know if it should or shouldn't be yet, but that's what we're gonna discuss. Because sometimes people get confused with what's my opinion and what's the, just the level of argument I'm trying to put out there. So let's talk about equipment impact to start. So I meaning like drivers and things like that. So I've got some numbers in front of me here. So in the past 30 years, obviously we've evolved from persimmon woods through to metal now to bigger titanium. That was a big change in the way golf clubs went. Club head sizes have increased from 190 cc uh, up to 460 cc. So obviously much bigger heads. And the COR, the speed in which the ball leaves the club face, has increased from point. 760 to 0.83 so it's a 0.830 sorry um so the average length of the standard driver has increased by from 43 inches 43 and a quarter inches up to 45 inches as well whilst the average driver shaft weight has decreased by around 25 percent i've seen valued research out there saying how the clubs have evolved over the past 30 years. So that's a serious change in the equipment we're using, which is always going to have some effect in 30 years, remember, on the distance people's, uh, people can hit the ball. And then the bigger breakthrough, if you like, is how people can hit the ball. I saw a study from the RNA saying that people aren't hitting the ball further. This was about five years ago. Um, people aren't hitting the ball any further so in the amateur game, but more golfers are using drivers than they ever did. So what that means is that with more people able to use drivers, it means they can have more goes of hitting it harder. They've got that bigger head, that kind of friendlier head to hit with. They're not going back to that smaller club and kind of just poking it up there. And then that translates onto the pro game, because what we're seeing is the pro game, if you give skilled players an easier club to hit, so persimmon wood over to the current drivers, then they will start to hit it harder. They will start to push that club. They will swing like we see people swinging now because you haven't got the disasters that will happen when you are hit, miss hitting it to the degree they're miss hitting it, which is obviously smaller than your average amateur. Now this is an interesting one. I need to hold my phone for this one because it's a lot of data. So 1983, your average drive was 257 and the average club head size was 150 cc's. Then if we go to 1995, around 1995, it was 220 cc's drive ahead. Driving distance went 263. And then in 2005, 289 yards, uh, driver heads went to 235 at 435 cc. And then finishing now at 291, 2016 average driving distance with a cc of around 454. So what happens with these numbers is this. Watch this. Right, so I'm just gonna, obviously this could be done kind of neater than this. So apart from my fantastic artwork, we start to see a bit of a parallel here between head sizes changing and the yardage really scooping up. Obviously we have the ball in here as well, which is why it scoops up quicker, but 
the equipment is kind of trending what the changes in distance is doing. So focusing only on the ball or saying that the ball is the root of all evil, which seems to be the press's kind of main focus at the minute, where, where they want to be going. Not all of them, but certainly it's out there, isn't it? The evidence kind of starts to suggest different when you look at it that way. Balls. Big balls. <laughs> Matthew, I've got one question to ask you about your balls. Yes. Do they go too far? No. Your balls don't go far enough, is what you say. <laughs> they go a long way right. Yeah, if they went 20 yards further right, I reckon I'd be even better. <laughs> There's other fairways over there, isn't there? Exactly, yeah. What are you doing with that fork? Just making some lunch. <laughs> with a fork? <laughs> Right, so one of the big things I think that's really overlooked is golf course design. It seems to be getting away with a lot in this whole debate. And I've got some interesting points again on my phone about co uh, golf course design. I mean, think about, let's just take it as given at the start. If you think about US PGA Tour, I mean, they want firm and fast is what they ask for. If you think of US Opens, it's firm and fast. You know, they, they these balls are running out, they're, they're getting extra distance from the conditions and how they want the courses set up. Interesting points I've got here, which is relative even to the, the Open Championship over the years. So this is from Peter Dawson, the RNA chief executive at the time. He was quoted saying, we took a stint meter and did it... Uh, and did a bit of stimping on some pretty dried out ground on the temp fairway, it was faster than the greens. Those balls getting up on the 18th were running the last 90 yards. That's the Open. Another little interesting fact here, at 2005 Open Championship at St Andrews, for the first time fairways were mowed with new green mowers cutting to seven millimeters in length. So that's the Open, they're using fairway cutters on the fairways to get the fairways, I mean, I. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they're getting away with not being a bigger part of the debate because I think it's a massive part of the debate. I mean, I've been lucky enough to play courses like Harbour Town. Yeah, Harbour Town's a classic example of a, a venue where it feels like just some pros won't go because it is ridiculously tight and not massively long. I mean, it can play long-ish, but nothing like other courses. Um, and it's just not that kind of stadium course that they're used to playing, you know, where it is wide open with um, you know, plenty of space for the crowds on banks where they can smash it offline. And then another interesting fact here, so in, 19, so in 1953 Carnoustie hosted the Open and the course was measuring 7,200 yards, that's just 10 yards longer than Royal Troon was in 2016. And if you look at the scores, the way they're trending in say major championships, they're not particularly following the trend of getting harder or easier. They're kind of following a trend of staying relatively same, like you can see from the yardages there of those two courses spanning over 60 years difference. Like, I'm not, I'm not, the more I look into this, the deeper we go down the hole. And also from reading some of the comments that flying around on Twitter from many sources, including my channels today, is it just feels to me a little bit like the ball is the one that ticks the boxes to get the debate going rather than has any kind of logic to it because equipment is already showing us trends and then the courses are showing us these trends as well. Courses definitely seem to be getting off lightly. I think it's to do with traditions, isn't it? And people not wanting to say bad things about courses that, you know, we kind of grow up and love and loved for years. I think Augusta's a great example. It's a course which its early defence is those greens because it's wide open so it plays into the hands of the long hitter and it obviously with the par fives and the way you can make up scores on the back line it's all built for the for the long hitter so it's no surprise why that one is having to defend against the long hitter because they don't want to narrow it down they don't want to put the bunkers in they don't want to put extra lakes in so they don't want to change what that course was designed to do. So it's kind of a, an entity in itself, but like I say, you can just go and play Harbour Town, play tour events around there every week. The skills that are required to win will move, they'll shift, they'll reflect, which I believe PGA Tour does follow stadium courses and the European Tour does as well. I've been to many of them and there's a lot of them where it is just long hits paradise, not much trouble, par fives that require two big hits, 
you know, you, you can build holes that harm those people as well as reward them rather than just reward them for all 18. I think golf courses and golf course design, there's a lot that can be said how that can really change how we all think about golf. All right, me and Orla who's not allowed back to school because she's contagious. I've got to go and get some paper because I've got a bookkeeper in. And man, she likes to print. I don't really print, but we're going through paper at a rate of knots. We got paper, didn't we? Yes. Not sure we needed them, did we? Don't open them yet, Daddy. Don't open them yet, Daddy. Don't open them yet. They're for Christmas. He's been collected. Lucky we found him, wouldn't you, Ola? Didn't want to collect the wrong one, would you? You've been doing some studying, I hear, Milo. What have you got for me? On the PGA Tour. Oh. <laughs> The driving, driving range has increased by 31 yards since 1985. That is about 1% each so, year. So 30 something yards since 1985 it's increased. That's only 1%. Mm -hmm. You learned anything else today? Since 1990, mm -hmm. scoring average hasn't changed, so it stayed quite flat. So driving distance increased by 1%, 30 yards over that time, but the scoring average is staying the same. Yes. Obviously in that time courses are adjusting for their distances, but interesting. I've got one for you, Lali. Only four of the top 10 driving distance leaders on the PGA Tour 2016 were inside the top 30 on the money list. Four of the top 10 driving distance leaders finished outside of the top 50 on the money list. Two of them are outside the top 100 on the mini list. So it shows that it's only a small aspect of the skill. The average... Oh, he's got another. Handicap. Yeah. He's only changed by one. One shot in the last 25 years, I've read. One shot in the last That means people aren't particularly getting better on the amateur side. And then in the women's game, USGA handicaps 1991 was 30. In 2016, it's 27. So it's improved by three shots. And I would put that down. Well, lots of demographic, as in more women have got to be playing golf now. It's definitely mm. that side of the game is actually growing, I would guess. So for me, what that kind of says, if scoring isn't particularly changing, I don't see where there's a problem. It seems like people are creating problems that seem to be being handled. The scoring average isn't changing. What do you think, Orla? <laughs> exactly. Well, there we go. I mean, it's obvious as I continue how little you start to scratch the surface on this massive debate, isn't it? I kind of feel at the minute that salmon tonight. Maybe it's being dealt with. The, the, you know, the, the scores aren't changing. Uh, amateurs and pros, they've leveled, they've stayed, they've been controlled. So possibly it's working, possibly. The idea of having a different ball for the pros compared to AMs or, you know, for the tour pros having a separate, it saddens me inside. And I'm not saying it's not a good thing, it just saddens me. It saddens me to think that I wouldn't be able to play the game that they're playing. I want to play golf. If someone's better than that, a lot better than me at it, that's cool, but I want to play the game they're playing. I don't want to play tennis with junior balls. I want to play tennis with the balls Federer's playing tennis with on a size court that he's playing on. It's such an appeal of the game for me personally. And I also think what happens is like, at what point do you start using those balls, experiencing how those fly? And there's also some research I've seen to show that if you limit the ball, that again, it's just gonna play into the advantage, it has to play into the advantage of maybe a certain style of player because of the design characteristics around it. So where it might not hurt someone like dusting that much, obviously it reduces distance. A slower swinger speed might be like a Zach Johnson, it would hurt them more, possibly. So I think there's so many unknowns in there. I think the other thing as well is that distance is a skill that should be rewarded while at the same time should be challenged the same way accuracy is a skill that is rewarded and challenged as well like putting is and like chipping is i just think course i think so much of it comes down to course design doesn't it more tees so people can play i mean if i go and play Celtic manor from the back 2010 course it's ginormous but there's six seven tees on every hole because they want the, the paying public to come through and still enjoy it. That still doesn't stop lots of them going off the back tees because it's obvious they want to play the courses that everyone's playing. Post comments down below, let me hear what you've got to say. Um, this is barely scratching the surface of this, but obviously a different ball for the pros compared to AMs, I think really at the moment 
I'm starting to edge towards thinking it's just an awful idea. It's such a small percentage of the game to change anything for. But yeah, let's hear what you've got to say. I think there's loads more we could do on this as well. So thanks for whoever sent me this. See you all tomorrow. Remember, we've got the Black Friday code running with golfonline.co.uk. Just go to golfonline.co.uk, send your loved ones there, anyone who's buying you a Christmas present. Use the code Black Friday and you get 10% off everything in terms of additional supply. But certainly go and check it out. Some good deals to be had for a cheaper Christmas. Thanks all for watching. See you tomorrow. It's all balls, isn't it, really?